Hello. Hi. Oh, I have to tell everybody that I am so relieved that that worked. Um, so, as ever, I've added another level of complexity <laughs> to, <laughs> to what we're doing here, which Katie will be absolutely thrilled to hear. Um, and so I created, I managed to um, create like an invite for everybody um, yesterday. First time I've ever done it. So it means that uh, you guys can just click on the set reminder um, and then hopefully you should get a little pop-up um, that tells you when uh, we're about to go live. Um, so hopefully that will help because I know like some people are like, oh, I missed it because, you know, I was like, got distracted by something or, um, you know, and it can just mean that we can, um, just makes it easier, just makes it easier. So I'm really, really glad that it's actually working and I'm live and I'm, I'm it's one of those things that like, it's, it was so technically complicated that I am quite amazed that I managed to get this done. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Me and technology have never like been the best of friends. Me and food, however. So welcome to another show here in my kitchen. Uh, let me just say hello to everybody who has joined successfully. Honestly, this has just completely made my day. Completely made my day. Um, so, uh, Colleen, good morning, Denise, and Mercedes, and Doug, uh, and Lara, so she's really looking forward to this, and quick announcement, Lara's going to be doing a live for us, which is really, really super awesome, so Lara is your lady for anything sustainable, so she's going to do a session on sustainable food for us, because I know that that's like a really, really big concern for you guys, you lovely beings out there, um, totally like, you know, conscious cuisine, like that's what we're going for. And that's like one way we can make it even more conscious and even more kind is by um, being sustainable. And so, uh, oh, and there's Faviola, love your name. Absolutely, I'm honestly totally in love with that name. Uh, Jim, good morning, good morning. Uh, Paul and George. Um, and actually this is a really good recipe for uh, food sustainability because at the moment we have had so many carrots so many carrots and actually okay right just a second i'll just be back okay, i'll be back in a second right i need to get something out of the fridge to show you so look at these how amazing is that so these were in my uh riverside veg box this week um and i'm not cooking with them today i'm just showing them off <laughs> basically i just wanted to show them off to you look how pretty how pretty do they look the leaves as well are really really bright green super 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 fresh um, so I'll definitely be using uh, the the leaves, if they don't fall off, <laughs> for a recipe. Uh, let me just pop them over there. But actually, the uh, the carrots that I'm using up are ones that are like a little bit old and they need they need using up basically. So, you know, making something like a chutney or a pickle or that type of thing is great for making sure that we don't waste those ingredients. Okay, so, um, ah, Victoria, Victoria joins. Um, and actually, that's a really, really good segue because I just wanted to have a chat with you guys because um, obviously, like I've mentioned in the group uh, and also on the page, that we are partnering with an animal charity. And it was something that I had been thinking about for a while because um, I want, I always wanted people to know that, that the Vegan Chef School is a vegan school. It's not plant-based, it is vegan and it does have animals at the heart of it. Um, and although, you know, we don't, we don't ever share any images of, you know, animal cruelty or, you know, the, giving people the reason why they should go vegan. But I kind of felt that uh, we'd maybe become a bit detached from animals. And so I wanted to partner with an animal charity uh, because, you know, people come to our shop and they spend money um, and asking them to make a small donation uh, to an animal charity is quite a relatively easy thing for us to do. Um, and it might not be a huge thing for the person who's buying from us you know if they give us like one percent or or two percent of, of, of whatever they're spending with us uh but for the animal charity it is it is a huge deal it is a huge deal and that that money can can go a long way um and so um there is one other thing as well that i wanted to announce to you guys today uh i've been i've really been holding back on telling you this because i'm really nervous that you know when something good really good is going to happen to you and you just kind of like worry that it's going to be taken away uh because it's like so exciting so um so me and jeff we have applied to adopt uh a dog 
from uh, from Miracle's Mission, uh, and this is Bo. Um, and so uh, we have decided to name her Bo, which is short for Rainbow. And of course, you guys will know the significance of a rainbow on the show. It means fun and hope, and I think that that is uh, really really apt for her. So she'll be coming to live with us in hopefully around like the next month or something like that. So we are like really, really, really super excited um, to have her as part of our family. Um, so I'm sure that you will get to see her eventually. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, but I, I, I really wanted to wait to tell you guys because I'm like, is it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen? Is it gonna? But it looks like everything is happening. It looks like everything is happening. So really, really, really can't wait. Uh, and um, yes. <laughs> Doug, I'm sure you'll get to meet her. I'm sure you will get to meet her, definitely, definitely. And Gloria as well. Can't wait to bring her down so that she can meet um you and all of your pups as well. Um, okay, so um do you do check out Miracles Missions pages as well just to see um more information about what they do. Um and yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, Lisa's, oh my god, adorable, I have two dogs, wish I could adopt them, oh no, I know, I know, I know, I know, but one thing to tell you actually, and this might, um, uh, might make you feel a bit better about what is going on uh, in the world, because I've spoken to quite a lot of um, dog rescue centres over the last couple of weeks, and they have told me that they have been absolutely inundated and they have huge wait lists at the moment. So I think because of what has happened recently, a lot of people have um, changed the way that they work, changed the way that they live. Uh, a lot more people are working from home um, and not just for the lockdown period, but actually going forward as well. So I think that that's probably why uh, so many people are able to adopt dogs now. Um, and that's my doorbell. I'll be back in a second. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it was persistent. Normally, like, I just let it go once and then, like, you know. I kind of like it, just ignore it because I'm talking to you guys, but it was persistent, so I, I should go and answer it. <sighs> anyway, uh, Paul says there's somebody at the door. Yes, that does remind me of a certain TV program in my childhood, probably does for you as well. Um, okay, so um, yes, yeah, really, really great news. So many more people are adopting dogs, so that's really, 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 really wonderful. Um, yes, and you know, a kind of like a silver lining to what is going on at the moment. Okay, so. So, and Jill says those ears. Yeah, I know, I know. I think she can probably fly <laughs> with those ears. They're pretty impressive. They're pretty impressive. But um, yes, I'm really glad that I could share, finally share that good news uh, with you guys. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> Denise said that, that those carrots are sexy. Yeah, they are. They are some good looking carrots, good looking carrots today. Okay, so, uh, let's get on to our recipe. And just to say, just to say, um, this is a student recipe. This isn't one of mine. I'm not gonna take, I'm not gonna take the um, ownership of this at all. It is one of my amazing graduates uh, recipes, uh, the lovely Andrea. So Andrea Reimer is a dietitian. Uh, very, 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 very talented. Um, and uh, yes, so I wanted to share one of her recipes. And also this feeds into what special day it is tomorrow okay this isn't my calendar it's probably not in anybody else's calendar but it's national cream tea day tomorrow how how very very english of us very very english um so for those of you who don't know uh a cream tea is you know scones and uh jam and um uh, cream you know cream cheese like uh, uh clotted cream like that type of thing uh, but I decided that not only would I make it vegan, but I wanted to show you an alternative one. So we've got our carrot chutney today, and then this will go with our scones. So these are the scones that we will make tomorrow, but I'm actually going to show you a really, really pared back version of this, because in Andrew's recipe, she put, um, you know, lots of uh, like herbs and spices and stuff like that, but I'm going to show you how to make a plain one, and then you guys can decide. 
to make it sweet or savoury. If you want to make it savoury and you want to make it like Andrew's, then I can tell you what she put in it, but we're going to keep it fairly simple. So this will be our alternative uh, cream tea. Um, and I think, I think it would be good to show you guys how to just like make some nice cashew cream to go on the side. So we would have our savoury scones, our carrot chutney, and then our cashew cream. Um, so do tune in for our scones tomorrow. Super, super easy, gluten free, as always. Um, <laughs> Gloria says you put the jam on first, don't forget. Okay, so in that case of our savoury scones, it would be chutney first. Chutney first, then the cashew cream. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Um, uh, George says <laughs> he loves live, live shows from home. Yeah, it's great when things like that happen. I'm always really, really nervous that my neighbours are going to start at mowing the lawn. So usually I end up having to have the the windows and the doors all shut but it's a bit hot today so i do have one window open so fingers crossed fingers crossed ingrid thank you a million times over for being um admin for us again today um okay uh let's get going with our recipe so there are quite a few ingredients here today that you have the list of um and just to say that you know you can play around with these ingredients. So just because you don't have one of them doesn't mean that you can't make this recipe. Apart from the carrots, you really need the carrots. <laughs> okay, that's probably the most important thing. That's the most important thing um, about this recipe. <clears throat> okay, so um, let me take you through the ingredients. Uh, we've got some olive oil here. Uh, I did replenish my bottle. Um, Colleen has guessed that there is a carrot under the rainbow, but we ha you have to tell me what is happening to the carrot. You have to tell me what is happening to the carrot. So we've got olive oil. You can use any type of neutral, neutral oil. That's absolutely fine. Any type of neutral oil. Coconut oil will be lovely in this recipe, actually. Really, really, um, that would be a really great flavour combination. Uh, we have black mustard seeds here. You can use any colour mustard seeds that you have. Um, if you don't have them, don't worry too much. Um, you'll still be able to make a great chutney without it. So the difference between black, brown and yellow is that basically the darker they are, the stronger they are. Um, <laughs> Colleen, I guess, is the rainbow carrot, uh, is it sweating? It is. It's perspiring. Yes, it's our, it's our very hot melting carrot here today. He doesn't look very happy at all because last night was Blooming hot! It was so hot! Please notice my my uh, very careful swearing these days. Um, it was very, very hot. We had to, uh, we had to uh, sleep in the living room last night because it was so hot upstairs. Okay, so, uh, Louise said, good morning, I, uh, you eat oil free? Okay, Sarah does as well. Can it be made without any oil? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, just omit the oil. Um, and we are going to be frying the, the mustard seeds, but you just don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Uh, Laura, <laughs> is the carrot massively overheating like the rest of us? Yes, it is. It is. The carrot does feel hot. It does. It does. We're all, we're all a bit melting today. Even the cats just look like they just can't be bothered at the moment. They just can't be bothered. Um, okay. So Debbie, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And thank you to anybody else who I haven't mentioned. Okay, and so here we have our two tablespoons of cumin powder. Uh, you can use gra uh, you can use seeds if you have that. Um, so that is an alternative. Uh, and then we have one tablespoon of turmeric. Always remembering with turmeric that it is the um, it is the spice that we use less of. So a little goes a long way with turmeric. There are certain spices that we just need to use less of. So if we use too much turmeric, the taste of the food can become quite metallic-y and not very pleasant at all. Um, so it is one that we always use less of, um, you know, when we're talking about, you know, the, the difference between the amount of uh, turmeric we've got and the amount of coriander that we've got. So um, one tablespoon of the turmeric powder, uh, three tablespoons of our coriander powder um, here, uh, again, you can use seeds if you want to. Um, you can grind them first if you if you want to. I actually quite like whole whole uh, coriander seeds as long as it is in a dish that has been cooked quite for quite a long time. Um, so we've got a coriander here. We've got a chili powder. Now this is a real choose your own adventure 
um, ingredient. So you do have to think about how spicy you want it to be uh, because we're going to put chilli powder in it and also fresh chilli. Okay, that might be why he's sweating as well. Okay, so uh, then we have our pepper. So you'll see in the ingredients list it says ground black pepper. I didn't have ground black pepper. I have black pepper, but I didn't want to spend a lot of time grinding it because I'm lazy. Um, so I've got white pepper instead. So white pepper is a bit stronger, so I just added a bit less. So it's probably about like two thirds of a tablespoon, something like that. But I love white pepper anyway, absolutely adore it. Okay, and just to say as well, with my organisation that I've got here, um, we have, I, I put them in order. So um, this is a really, really good practice for you guys to do. Um, and so it just kind of like makes things a bit clearer as we're cooking somebody else's recipe. You know, uh, today I am making somebody else's recipe, so maybe I'm not as familiar with it as I normally would be. Um, so first of all, you know, this is, is stage one all our spices along here um, and our oil as well and then this is going to be stage two we've got our uh, lemon here I only had half a lemon um, so I'm just going to use that uh, but in the recipe it says one one lemon zested in juice but you know if you've only got half then that's absolutely fine uh, and then we have our apple cider vinegar here you can use any type of light vinegar you want to use you can even use a red wine vinegar it will change it slightly but to be honest there are so many other flavors going on here it isn't going to make a huge amount of difference so please don't feel that you can't make it just because you don't specifically have apple cider vinegar you can use other vinegars uh, here we have some balsamic vinegar and so this is a way that our students um, do get quite creative because you know uh, the rest of the recipe is fairly um, kind of like traditional in a sense um, of chutneys uh, that are of an Indian origin you know but of course you wouldn't find balsamic vinegar in there but this is the way that a lot of our students can be creative you know by mixing by mixing um, ingredients from from all around the world so this is a really really lovely addition um, and then we have our third lot of ingredients here which is our fresh ginger our bird's eye chili now um, uh, Andrea did specify green chillies, didn't have any green chillies, so we've got red. Um, and I'm going to be really, really careful with how much I add um, because we don't want it to be too spicy. Um, so I'm just going to add this this one. But of course, you guys just decide how much you want to put in. Then we have our coconut sugar here. You can use any sugar that you feel comfortable eating. Uh, and for those of you guys who don't like to use uh, coconut sugar, then you could use something like date syrup. That would be a really, really, really good addition. Uh, or coconut syrup, you know, coconut nectar. I think that would be great as well. The only thing with date syrup, I would say, is that it does have quite a rich flavour of its own. Uh, so do bear that in mind. Uh, but I think it would be one that wouldn't be too out of place. Really, it wouldn't be too, too out of place at all. Um, and just to say as well, I actually halved the amount of sugar that is in this recipe because for me that's a bit too much but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it and taste it see what it's like and then if I feel like it needs more sugar then I know that I can add that because really the sugar doesn't necessarily have to cook out for all this amount of time okay so I've got six tablespoons of um of sugar there okay um, and then here we have our tomato puree, so four tablespoons of tomato puree. If it is double concentrate uh, that you have at home, then please do just halve your recipe. Um, and so that will be popping that into our recipe as well. But you could, if you don't have tomato puree, you could use passata if you have that. Okay, at a push, you could even use, you know, um, some uh, tin chopped tomatoes. You just want something to give it that tomatoey edge. And then, of course, we have salt here as well. Okay, so, um, of course, we have our carrots as well. And I wanted to give you guys an option because I feel like grating carrots is, is kind of hard. It is kind of hard. And I know that some people have, you know, RSIs, and, you know, I used to have an RSI as well. So I was always looking for... A way to um, just make cooking a bit easier for myself. 
uh, whilst I had that RSI. Um, oh, Paul said, if your neighbours start mowing the lawn during one of the Facebook lives, just tell them many national and international viewers request that they do not, as it bothers them. Okay, I will tell them. I will tell them. I'm not sure what else to say. <laughs> Karen, thank you for joining us. Um, okay, right. Uh, let's go on. Yeah, so as I was saying with our carrots, so we can grate them if we want to, uh, but I know that that can be a bit tricky. So I tested this out before the show and we're going to pop them into our chopper attachment. Um, so you might want to do this in batches because if we put all of the carrots in here, it's probably going to be a bit too, too much for it to handle. So I'm just going to get a bowl here, uh, pop this to the side and then we can do it in batches. Uh, so we just need to roughly cut these. Um, our carrots are organic, so I'm not going to bother with peeling them at all. But of course you can do that if you want. And then I'm just going to cut them roughly into small chunks. Just so that it's going to be a bit easier for our for our blender to deal with. Justine, Justine's only just joined. Really? But you're cooking along. Oh, okay. Is anybody else cooking along today, actually? Do let me know. Do let me know. So just chop and tail them. Get those bits off. And then roughly chop them. So yeah, if you guys don't have organic carrots, then you might want to peel them. So we can put about half of our carrots into, into our chopper attachment. Okay, Justine fell asleep, but she was meant to do the cook along. Oh dear, you're going to have to catch up. Babe, do you have a, a chopper attachment? Because that will probably speed things up for you. Okay, right. Um, so I'm just going to pulse this. So if you remember, there are quite, there are quite a few times that I pulse uh, ingredients. Um, when I'm using a chopper attachment because I don't want to blitz it until it is very very fine and I just want to be able to keep an eye on it and manage it a bit a bit better so we'll just pulse it now so I'm just stopping it every now and again so that I can look into here and just see what's going on And there are still a few bits, so just give it a bit of a shake around and I'll pulse it again. Hello, Karen, thank you for joining us. Okay, there we go. So that is absolutely fine. Yeah, so our chutney will be, you know, it won't be, um, it won't have like those long pieces that you get from grating, but if you've got an RSI or, you know, you're in a rush, and you don't want to spend quite a while grating carrots, then I totally understand. I totally understand. And you can do it this way instead. So we'll just pop our carrot into, into our bowl. If you guys have a food processor, and you know, it's quite, quite a big food processor, then you can probably all do it all in one go, actually. <laughs> Lisa says, uh, I think you should sell that chopper as you use it in a lot of recipes. I really do. I really, really do. I just, I think they're brilliant. I think they're, they're really brilliant, obviously. <laughs> I don't need to tell you guys that. Get a bit more. Honestly, guys, you know, I went through a period when I was a private chef where I had a really, really bad RSI. So I had carpal tunnel and I would get this excruciating pain in my elbow. Uh, it, it was on my right hand side as well and I'm right handed. Um, and, you know, I didn't want to tell my employer 
Um, so I just had to like find any ways that I could to use machines basically to automate what I was doing um, as much as possible. But I think, you know, it gave me a really, really great insight into um, how to cook when, um, when you have things like that. And so I'm much better able to help people who have, who have issues like that. Okay, uh, so we've got all of our carrot here. That's prepped and ready. Um, and now we can get on to um, cooking our mustard seeds. So we're going to have, the carrot's gonna have to come out of the way. There we go, you can go over there. Um, so we'll bring over our pan and heat up some oil. Okay, so I've got a nice big pan here with a lid on, so you will need a lid um, for this recipe. So we'll just pop it on a low-ish heat um, and three tablespoons of olive oil. I'm going to guesstimate it as best as I can. Um, so anybody who doesn't want to add oil to this recipe, then just don't do this part. Um, and with the mustard seeds, you don't necessarily have to um, fry them. Uh, you will get more um, flavour out of them, but you'll still get flavour. You still will. You still will get some flavour out of them. It just won't be as strong. But that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. Uh, Kelly says I end up buying one of those contraptions. Usually helpful. Good, good, good. Any way that we can make um, cooking easier for everyone, more accessible, more fun. Good for me. Good. Uh, that you know that that's the whole goal of like what we're doing. Um, so any kind of gadgets that are. Actually, let let me come over to here and tell you guys this. Any any gadgets that are useful, not going to sit in your cupboard, not ridiculously expensive, um, not massive, and are just going to take up like loads of space. Not difficult to clean. There we go. That's like the five things. Um, about our, our little kind of gadgets. Okay, right. Okay, so this is heated up already. Uh, so we'll just pop our seeds in here. Okay, great, there we go. Um, and once they start to pop, and these are going quite quickly because you know what my hob is like, um, then we can add the other ingredients. Well, our, our other spices, I should say. Um, so we've got our cumin powder we can add. Our turmeric, be careful of your nice white cloves, please. There you go. Our coriander. This is already smelling absolutely divine. <laughs> our chili powder. Oh, there we go. And our pepper. And I'll just give this a bit of a stir. And we just want to cook out these spices just for a couple of minutes. So people who don't want to use any oil, you can dry fry the spices. So we just want to heat up those spices so that they start releasing the oil. So it would just it will just make our spices a bit stronger, basically. That's what we're looking for. Okay, now this is going a bit quickly. So I'm just gonna pop it on here. There we go. Uh, whilst I do the next, the next stage. Okay, let me just get rid of these. So now, I need to add my lemon zest, my lemon juice, my cider vinegar, um, and my balsamic vinegar. I think I'm gonna sneeze, sorry. <laughs> hmm. <coughs> sorry about that. <laughs> ah, because it's, it's getting quite spicy in here. It is getting quite spicy in here. Uh, Gloria says you've been looking in my kitchen. <laughs> I can't wait. I actually can't wait to see what Gloria's kitchen is like and all of the different gadgets that she has in there. And yeah, yeah. Because you know what? It's, that's one of the things that I think like is really, really great about the course that we offer 
is that um, people get to talk to each other about food. Um, and when you're a real food geek, that's such a pleasure. It's such a pleasure, like, getting to um, just, like, talk about, like, you know, different herbs for, like, hours on end or, like, what your favourite spice is or, you know, different ways of using um, cauliflower leaves or, you know, once you find someone who you can chat to about stuff like that, it's great. It's really, really good. Um, Patricia says, what what would you recommend? I need one and where have I looked? They are sold out. Okay, so... <laughs> Lisa, thank you for saying bless you. That's very cute. Um, so I always say over five hundred watt, over five hundred watt, uh, and then it will be um, it will be able to take like grinding nuts and things like that. Um, probably won't do flax seeds still. Uh, you need a high speed blender for flax seeds, but um, a lot of a lot of nuts and seeds it will it will blend, um, and then it's much more much less likely um to to burn out which is you know obviously you know not what we want we don't want it to burn out i've had many a blender burn out on me okay so now i'm going to add um our tiny vinegar our balsamic vinegar and then also my uh my lemon juice so i'm just gonna put my hands underneath it and so i can catch the liquid but also I can catch any seeds that want to pop out rather than having to fish them out. There we go. And I can pop that into there. Let me just wash my hands with you. There we go. And as the recipe says, you know, you guys can add a whole lemon zest and lemon juice. It's just that uh, we've been drinking too many gin and tonics recently, so <laughs> I didn't have one of those. Okay, so now I can pop it onto back onto a low heat. I'm just going to put it on one for the moment because this is an absolute demon, an absolute demon. Uh, so uh, let's just go back over here. Um, there we go. Okay. Um, so now we just need to add all of the other ingredients that we've got left. So I've got my carrots here. So obviously like they're already ready. That's absolutely fine. But I do need to prep my uh, my ginger and also my chilli. Um, so let me just get rid of those. Put them in the washing up pile for later. <laughs> um, and prep these two guys. Okay, so once again... Once again, you can use your um, your microblade if you have one. I know that Karen bought one recently, so Karen, I hope that you have uh, been able to put it to to good use. So as you can probably see, this is already bubbling away. So it being on one, it's absolutely fine uh, for me. Um, so with the ginger, you guys can put in as much as you want or as little as you want. We're massive ginger fans. Um, in this house, so I'm going to put in a lot. The recipe says half a tablespoon. Um, there you go. And again, I'm using organic ginger, so I don't have to worry about the skin. Um, you know, having pesticides on it and what have you. Right there we go. So I think that that's probably about right. It doesn't have to be exact. You know, this isn't one of those recipes that it has to be absolutely exact. We're not baking. There we go. And then our bird's eye chilli, and with our bird's eye chilli, I'm going to chop this as finely as I can because I don't want big chunks of chilli. Uh, you know, I think that when chilli is this hot, um, we don't want big chunks of it. Unless you're like a real hothead. If you're a real hothead, then you might want big chunks of really, really hot chilli. I know Doug, Doug Benin, blooming ghost chilli, which is a bit insane. Uh, so he might be okay, but in this house we want really, really tiny bits of of chilli as much as we can. I'm leaving the seeds in there as well. So with my first slice, I am trying to get it as small as I can. And then I'm going to really, really fine, finely, finely chop it. Okay, so that 
can go into our pan along with our carrots. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of water. So guys, um, you can add some water to this recipe, especially if it dries out. And mine is already, you know, drying out a bit. So I'm just going to grab a bit of water. So you will get some water that is going to be released from the carrots. Um, in fact, let me put this in first. So we've got our coconut sugar there, our tomato puree here, and I'm going to give this a really, really good mix before I put the carrots in. And that would make sense. There we go, and our salt as well. So the sweetness of the carrot will definitely uh, be a really good balancer for the spices in this recipe. Really, oh, that's looking really lovely and thick. Really lovely and thick. Okay, so now let's put our carrot into, sorry, I'm just going to see if I can see if you've got any questions for me or comments or anything like that. There we go. Right. There you are. Right, okay, sorry, I found you again. Right, so just popping our carrot into our saucepan. There we go. And just give this a stir. Go. Make sure all of the carrots are covered with all of that paste. And now we can leave it on a low heat and let it simmer away. If it does dry out, then you can add a bit of water. But once those carrots start cooking, then yeah. water should come from them. So let me just see if I... <laughs> just see so I just whacked everything into the pan. Good for you! Good for you! Uh, I think that that's like an okay thing to do. I think so. I think so. Let's come over here. Let me just see if we've got any questions. Uh, just seeing says, I think I got too excited about the SCOBY um, being a happy parent and being up all night. Oh, oh. Um, Jeanette says, I'm sensitive to cooked tomato. Would, what do you recommend as a substitute? Can I get away with reducing it? Um, yes, you can. But I would say like you could just swap it out for something else. Um, I think that you would probably want something that's a bit maybe acidic in there. Um, you know, if you if you've got it, I know it's a bit of an unusual ingredient, but tamarind, tamarind would work really, really well as a substitute because it's got the acidity, um, it's got the thickness as well, um, and it's a flavour that goes with all of these other um, ingredients that we've got in this recipe. So that's a really, really good substitute. But I know that it's a bit of a random one, um, so I would say add more lemon juice add more lemon juice and then just omit the, the, the tomatoes, don't worry about it. It's still gonna be really, really lovely. Because, you know, I think like when we're talking about a recipe like this, there is so much going on in it. There are so many different flavors that if you have to sub one or you have to omit one, it isn't gonna make a huge amount of difference. It's just like when we start subbing and changing like half the recipe, then it can get a bit tricky. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, let me see if we've got any more questions. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, Gloria says, I use a reamer, but pips escape. Yes, yeah, they do. Um, and da, da, da. Oh, David says, PSA or FYI, doctors say that the washing of hands, especially during COVID, <laughs> takes 20 seconds. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Uh, Justine says, I feel like I've let the side down today. Okay, don't worry. Honestly, Justine, you're like, you're still working in really, really hot weather, delivering everyone's post. I think, I think you, you're allowed a break. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, Janet says, great. I also make a no mato sauce with beets and pumpkin that might work. That's such a, I really, really like that. I really, really like that. And it would be, actually, I think that some of our group would love to um, see that recipe. So if you don't mind sharing it, it would be great for you to put it in the community hub. Um, and in fact, all of you guys, because 
you know, it's I love seeing your photos of our recipes. But you're very, very, very welcome to share photos of your recipes. Um, and you know, even if it is something simple, that that's okay. That's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, so you know, do do share all these things in our. So that's our community hub. Uh, it's the vegan chef school community hub, uh, which is our Facebook group. Okay, so we're just going to leave this to simmer for about two hours. So we're not going to stay here for two hours. Don't worry. Don't worry. Although we probably could talk about food for two hours easily. We could talk about uh, vegan food and fur babies and how hot it is and um, that's about it. Like that, that would that would go well past two hours. Well past two hours. Uh, oh, good, good. Janet's going to share um, her lovely recipe with us, which is awesome. Um, okay. So let me just bring you guys to the overhead cam so you can see this once again. But of course, you know, it is going to change and get a bit more kind of gloopy, a bit thicker. And then the flavours will really, really mingle. So with a recipe like this, the longer you can leave it, um, just simmering on a low heat, the better. As I said, it is about two hours. Um, but if you are going to increase the recipe, so I'm actually going to uh quadruple the recipe now i'm going i've got a load of carrots to use up uh, but i know that it will probably then take longer than two hours okay uh but i just need to get to a point where these carrots feel soft um so you know take some out um cool it down before you taste it okay because this has got hot sugar in it hot vinegar it's going to be hot okay <laughs> don't want you burning your mouth so let it cool down slightly and then taste it and just see if these bits of carrot have softened and that's what we're looking for. And then we can pop it into a jar. So we've got uh, our reusable jars here, a uh, great way to use up um, things like this uh, that you've got uh, hanging around the kitchen. And then once it's cooled, then we can pop it in the fridge. And this will last a really, really long time. Um, as I said, Jeff really, really likes it on his sandwiches, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to make it. But of course, it's also lovely on our scones. So these are the scones that we're gonna be making tomorrow. Um, as I said, uh, I don't know if, if uh, all of you uh, were here when I said that, uh, but we're gonna be making them like fairly simply uh, without all of these like added flavorings um, in them. So the ones that uh, Andrea developed, you know, they've got all these lovely flecks of, I think she put coriander in there and more chilies um and stuff like that but i'm just going to be making them really really simply without all that jazz uh in them um just to show you and then if you want to add those things then you can but equally if you want to make it into a sweet scone then you'll know how to do that as well so we're going to keep it nice and simple tomorrow um oh and patricia says are we making crackers to dip into the chutney tomorrow no we're going to be making Scones. So uh, we actually had the savoury scones last night with some dal um, and uh, some writer, some uh, some cucumber writer um, and a salad, and it was absolutely delicious. Really, really, really good. And we were actually talking about whether um, having a scone like that with a savoury dish is what Americans mean like by by a biscuit. Is that right? Is that right? I know they, they say that we're, um, we're two countries that are separated by a common language because, you know, there are words that we say differently. But I think it's food. I think it's food. There are, like, marked differences. Um, and we're just, like, trying to get our head around, like, what a biscuit is. Um, yeah. Ah, Justine says, I'm going to make these cheese scones today. Oh, good, good, good. Good. And Patricia says, mmm, I'm in. Yup. Yup, absolutely. And, uh... <laughs> Okay, so Justine says rhymes with gone. And so what she means by that is that in the UK, uh, we say, do you, we always have this thing of like, do you say scone or scone? And because I'm from the middle of England, uh, this kind of like North South divide, I say it both ways. I say it absolutely both ways. Uh, so I say them interchangeably, which probably annoys people. Um, because some people will say, definitely has to be scone, as in gone. And other people will say, it has to be scone, as in scone. <laughs> 
Okay, so, oh, uh, Janet found an interesting uh, link on Pinterest, but it doesn't actually tell me what that is. Uh, oh, that's the recipe that you, the, the no mato. <laughs> Sorry, I like, I really love things, but I really love plays on words, so. Uh, Christine says hello day. I decided to join last minute. Have caught up, but can't remember if you said you put in all of the 12 tablespoons of sugar. No, I didn't. I put in half. I put in half because 12 tablespoons is a lot for me. It is a lot for me. And also, I I don't have a massive sweet tooth. I used to a long, long time ago, uh, but not so much these days. So I've only put in half the amount, so six tablespoons, and then I'm going to try it when it's done um and then see if i want to add any more so when it comes to something like the sugar or the uh, grated ginger or the bird's eye chili um they're things that we can add more of towards the end the salt as well whereas with our spices really they all need to go in at the beginning and we can't really adjust them later on because um the spices they need time they need those two hours to to mingle and uh to blend with each other um uh, and that type of thing so you know if you get to the end of cooking it and you think mm, i'm not sure whether it needs like more cumin or something like that you could add cumin but just mixing it in then won't really give you like a full idea of what you know the 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 end goal will be what the uh, what the uh, final recipe will be um so there are those things that you can play around with. Uh, so Karen says, oh no, I'm so late. That's okay, you can watch it on catch up. Fine, fine. Uh, and we'll be here again tomorrow. So, you know, uh, Christine says, thank you. I only put in six just in case. Yeah, yeah. So I say, you know, give it a try. See how you feel. Sugar is one of those um, subjective things like salt and chilli and garlic. Uh, it's really, really up to you. So we do have that flexibility. And I would rather err on the side of putting in less sugar first and then changing it later because you can always add more you can't take it away <laughs> okay right justine says uh scone gone scone cone i wonder what the queen says that wouldn't necessarily make it the right thing though would it <laughs> okay so apparently a scone is a biscuit i think denise has commented uh clarifying that for us um and but what would you have what would you have a biscuit with so with american food you have you know these like savory biscuits like scones on the side what would you what would you have with and in fact actually that brings me to another another thing is that we can also one day make a savory um cobbler that would be good that would be very good i'd really really like that really like that uh oh ingrid says thanks to andrew Reimer for this amazing recipe yes 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 um it's such a lovely recipe um, and we'll carry on for part two tomorrow um with our savory scones um, and gloria quite rightly says carrots are naturally sweet yes absolutely and i would say um the the organic ones have so much flavor so much flavor as well uh, maria says i watched it but i could not read comments on my tv oh oh okay that's interesting yeah yeah that's a bit annoying as well because you know part of the fun is like reading everyone else's comments and like you know that that type of thing so and and also if you don't see the comments then probably the things that i'm saying are really random like really random <laughs> so <laughs> okay so guys i'm gonna keep keep bubbling away for the next couple of hours keep adding some water because it is already quite thick i think i'm gonna add some more um so you guys can just come to the overhead cam for one last look one last look and you'll see how what beautiful color that is absolutely beautiful really really pretty color and also if you guys want to add something like dried fruit to this that would be a great addition really really good addition uh with the lemon juice that was in it if you want to put lime or orange both of those would go both of those would absolutely go so be sure to add more water as and when you need to okay guys there we go. There we go. Um, let's just bring you guys over here. Let me see if we've got any more questions. Kelly says, my family, who are Canadian, would do biscuits with stews or for shortcake desserts. Oh, okay. Okay. And Doug said, if a scone is a biscuit, then I'm a Dutchman. Also pronounced like bone. Fight me. 
I'll, I'll say it either way. I don't mind. Like, whatever, whatever, however you want me to say it, I'll say it. it's going to one. Yeah. Uh, Paul said, how, how have others found the sound today? Okay, so um, he said, he just realised I have been finding sound okay with maximum volume on phone connected to good headphones, but not great without the headphones. It would be good if I had background noise on my side. Okay, so how is everybody else uh, finding the sound? So if you can just comment, that would be really, really helpful. I think everyone else is okay, because usually people mention it if there is a problem with the sound. Uh, so Joss said, I know... I know on your phone you have to be on the Facebook app to see comments. You don't see them just online. Um, okay, so could that be the problem? Thank you for suggesting that. That's very helpful. Justine said, sound has been a bit quieter lately, but it's still okay. Okay, so basically, right, with the um, program that I'm using, I can actually turn the sound up. So let's give it a go and see if it helps because, you know, we've got a little bit of time. Okay, so this is about a third of the way up. It's got a bar. So just imagine there's a bar. It's a third of the way up. This is two thirds of the way up. I'm not going to shout. Still speaking as I normally do. It's two thirds of the way up. Is that any different? Is that any different? Okay, and then once again, I go right up to the top. Is that any different? Is that any different? Is that any different? Is that any different? <laughs> What do you think? What do you think? This is like maximum volume now. Maximum volume. Does that make any difference whatsoever? Oh, and Gloria quite rightly says, orange and carrots go well. Oh, it does. It does make a difference. Okay. It's, it is better. Okay. Okay. We're going to go maximum volume now. We will go maximum volume now. Because I actually thought, I actually thought that it was too loud for you. I actually thought that it was too loud for you, and that's why I had it a bit lower. Oh, Christine said it's a bit echoey, though. Uh, you need it on maximum volume. Okay, so we'll have it on maximum volume, and then and then I can just be carry on with talking to you, and then I can just kind of like, and then I can phone myself back in. How's that? <laughs> And I promise I'll stop playing with these tools eventually. Eventually I'll get bored of them. Okay, right, okay, let's do maximum volume. I'm sorry, it's taken us like nearly 100 shows to figure that one out, but there you go. There you go, always improving, always improving. That's the main thing to focus on. Okay, uh, apparently, apparently you all half deaf. Uh, okay, okay, right, the volume is good. Great, 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 okay, so, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me um, on the show. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. And it's really loads of fun, like, getting to know you guys. Because there's a marked difference between when I started this um, and now. Of course, there are things that we do a lot better. But the main thing that is different is that I know you guys a bit. Um, and I kind of think of you as my friends. Uh, and so it's really, really lovely, um, you know, that it's not just, like, a one-way thing. It's not just, like, you guys watching me. But it's me, like seeing like your photos and um, you know seeing the posts that you share and yeah, yeah, just getting to know you a bit. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Really nice to just come and hang out with my mates and show you how to cook something. It'd be great if I could actually like give you the food to eat now, but pff, there we go. One day, one day, one day. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, and Justine quite rightly says that you can always turn it down your end as well. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. From now on, the sound will be up, 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 up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do have a really, really lovely day. Um, and do remember that next week we have our 101st show uh, before we have our mini break. Uh, and so that is Epic Brown Day, uh, where you guys get to make your brownies live with me. And then you get to decorate them in whichever way your imagination can conjure up the weirder, the bigger, the brighter, the more sparkly, the better. <laughs> so please do go all out. Um, uh, and thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for all the love as well. Oh, and uh, okay, right. So uh, Colleen says uh, that Justine missed the pick of, of our new dog, Bo, who will hopefully be coming to us soon. So what a better way to just quickly show another picture of Bo. 
just 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 for the sake of it just because she's absolutely adorable uh so there we go so Bo will be coming to us in the next month or so and i'm sure i'm sure she'll come on screen to show you guys yeah absolutely there we go okay so uh thanks thanks so much for your love and laughter and your love of vegan food as well. Um, I will see you all tomorrow where we'll be making arts going, so please do check it out. Um, and then we can have it with our spicy carrot chutney. Um, thank you so much for your company today and have a lovely day.